All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So the discussion today is about a preprint from Peking University, Beijing, China. The summary of the discussion, let me just very quickly show it to you. And then we'll go over the references and stuff. So this is these are the gifts for humanity. They're continuing. You are welcome. So here is a summary. Again, keep in mind, it's a preprint. The CoronaVac, that inactivated virus vaccine in China, that vaccine with three doses or vaccine with three doses and then a breakthrough infection with BA1 or vaccine with three doses and a breakthrough infection with BA2 or vaccine with three doses and BA5 reinfection or breakthrough infection, all are not offering good protection against BA4's subvariant, not BA4, but the subvariants of BA4. That's a big news. Although, I want to balance it out, in the US, BA4 and its subvariants are really not taking off as aggressively as was thought. So let me actually show you. So if I go to this CDC, these are the, and we'll have uh, Paul with us next Thursday and we'll talk about it. And Paul would do a better job than I do. And here, if you see, there the BA4, 6 is 9.2%. But more interestingly, the this blue little bar here that is traveling, that is the BA4 starting from somewhere in June and slowly coming up. So its ramp is not similar to others. So <clears throat> that is the situation for how it is progressing. However, another important thing is that it has made Evusheld or Evusheld, whatever way it is pronounced, completely useless. It has escaped it completely. But in this whole thing, there is one ray of light. Beptelovimab or Beptelo, Beptel, Beptilovimab, Beptilovimab, Beptilovimab is still potent against this variant. And that is the only antibody that is still potent against this variant. Another scary thing that if I can share with you, let's just, the, my, my room looks scary as well nowadays because I don't turn on the bigger lights. The other scary thing is that BA5 based, if somebody had CoronaVac, then had BA5, the escape from their antibodies of BA4, 6 is more than BA1 or BA2 or or just the vaccine. That's interesting. So this is the summary. Vaccine and vaccine plus breakthrough infections, especially BA5, are really not protective for BA4, 6, not BA4, but the subvariants. Beptilovimab is still potent. Evusheld has become useless. Okay, so now let's go to a little more further summary. Let me now show, show you the references as well. This is drbean.com. In the description of this video, there is a link for one-time payment of a very tiny amount, and you get access to about 900 videos. So that is that. This is CDC. We just looked at it. This is the tracking. This is the preprint that we're going to talk about. They say further humoral immunity evasion of emerging SARS-CoV-2 BA4 and BA5 subvariants not the BA4 and 5 itself. They are actually comparing these subvariants to BA4 and 5. This is their PDF. This is another study, resistance of SARS-CoV-2 Omicron subvariants, BA4, 6, to antibody neutralization. Another study that shows that there is a problem with the neutralization. Then some more references that are in the description as well, just to add a little more um, color to the discussion, or if you would, for your weekend reading pleasure. So continuing then, what did they see? So imagine this is the spike protein. And here is the ACE2. This is a cell 
on the cell, this is ACE2, and here is a spike protein connected to some virus. We saw that the BA46 subvariants have R346 mutation on their spike protein. Now, R346 mutation is actually on BA46. Six BA4 as well. However, BA4-6 has further flavors of these mutations. Similarly, BA5 or BA5-7 also has similar mutations. So what is that mutation? R346T or R346 mutations. This mutation is on the near the receptor binding domain. So that is this area where the spike protein is bound. Let me make it bigger. So this area where this is the receptor, this is the receptor binding domain. On the receptor binding domain, this little dashed line area is the receptor binding motif. This mutation is not on the motif, but still near the receptor binding domain. Still not enough to interrupt the binding. However, enough to cause the antibodies not to work or to work less. This particular mutation is helpful for the virus in the following way. Number one, as I said, it is a non-receptor binding motif mutation. Secondly, it stabilizes the binding of the spike protein to ACE2. There are some mutations that actually destabilize the binding they become such a mutation that the electrical charges and the binding and the and the fitting mechanical fitting of the two proteins becomes difficult however this particular mutation r346 is such that it actually stabilizes this binding at the same time it is a zero charge difference mutation what does that mean that means whenever we add some mutation to amino acids, it is possible that a previous amino acid will be replaced by a new amino acid or acids, which will have a different electrical charge on them. Because of that, the protein would, would carry a different, possibly a different shape and charge. So here what they're saying is, it is stabilizing for the binding. That means the shape becomes optimal but it is not electrical charge changing mutation. That's fine. That is how these mutations are. Now, a similar mutation in BA47, the one above us, BA46. This is BA47. This also has R346S. So the replaced amino acid is S. And then as we can go to the table and see what amino acid is the S amino it is acid. Then BA59 also have this mutation and they have R346I. So there are some variants with the R346K, some as you saw, BA46, that is T. Then BA47 is S and 9 is I. These are the mutations. Now what happened was, this gives the BA4 subvariants and BA5 subvariants a substantial growth advantage over their parents. And this is why, as I showed you the CDC tracker, interestingly, the tracker is now plateauing for BA5 at 88%. That means BA5, BA5 is not gaining more ground. And BA4 six is very slowly gain, gaining ground. Now, here's another good news. The good news is it is assessed in some studies that the BA4 lineage is actually less severe. So that will be good, but at the same time, we are seeing here that it is escaping significantly. So if you see here, if we continue with their um, study numbers, so let's say this is a, what did they mean by humoral immunity escape? We have two kinds of immunity, humoral and cytotoxic. 
that they both are part of acquired immunity. Although we have cytotoxic immunity on the innate arm as well, but we normally, when we say cytotoxic immunity, we are talking about CD8 plus cells. Humoral immunity means that the B cells making antibodies and sending those antibodies in the blood circulation and the tissue fluids. Humor means blood plasma or blood or the fluids of the body. Why do we call it humoral immunity? Somewhere when the immunology was in the early times, in 19, I don't know, 110 or so, or even before that, they were observing that if they have the hor horse's blood or an animal's blood given to a human, they saw that sometimes that would improve the person. So they said there is something in that blood of the animal or fluids of the animal that are helping. So they said there is some help. They didn't know the antibodies are there. Then they said there is some help in the fluids. So they called it the immunity via fluids or blood, so humoral immunity. Here the researchers are saying that the humoral immunity, that is the antibodies-based immunity, has become significantly escaped by BA4-6 subvariants. BA4 itself and BA5 themselves are still being picked up by the immunity by vaccine or by the infection. But these guys, BA4-6, 4, 4 7, and 5-9, they, they have escaped. Now, how did they see? What they did was they took some plasma, and I would go in detail a little later, but let's just see for the time being in a high level. They took the plasma for patients who had the vaccine or had a vaccine three doses and then the breakthrough infection. They took their plasma and they compared the efficacy of the antibodies present in that plasma of this patient or vaccinated person. And please remember, they didn't have the patient alone meaning they didn't say, all right, BA5 only infection. It was, at least the, the figure that I saw, in all cases, it was vaccine plus the infection and then the escape. I think that is just a, let me confirm it as well so I don't misspeak. So if I go down here, you can actually check this out as well. This is the diagram. So vaccine, three doses, vaccine plus BA1 breakthrough, vaccine three doses plus BA2 breakthrough, vaccine three doses and BA5 breakthrough. So I think this is it. They have no other, um, they don't have the data for infection only. I, I'm sure that it frustrates us when we cannot get all data together to be able to make up our mind or understand more. Anyways, back here, BA4 convalescent plasma. So assume BA4 plus the previous CoronaVac, BA5 convalescent plasma plus a CoronaVac. They compared them to this BA4-6 or subvariants, and here is what they found, for example. One example. They found that BA4-6 or 7 or 5-9 had escaped so much that the NT50 potency had reduced by 2.4 to 2.6 times. NT50 is neutralizing titer of 50% of the virus. And it is a potency. So the higher the NT50, the more potent the plasma, the antibody is more binding and better. And a small concentration of antibody can take out a lot of virus. On the other hand, if the NT50 is lower, that means the potency is lower. And you have to give a lots of antibodies to try to capture the virus. So I have a link in the description for one more study just to understand how these NT50 based measures are done. And as I said before, Baptilovimab is still working. Avusheld is gone. Details. It is something interesting. CoronaVac only, just the vaccine, three doses. BA4-6 has escaped 1.5 to 1.7 times 
lower potency for NT50. And so they say these results indicate the strong humoral immunity evasion capability of BA4, BA5 sublineages with R346 mutation. So that is R346K or T or S or I. Suggesting these sublineages, including BA4, 6, 4, 7, 5, 9, and BF7, would gain, would gain an advantage in transmissibility under the global background of the pandemic caused by BA4 and 5. Now, <clears throat> I'm still not actually too concerned because the numbers that we are seeing in the US at least are not going up as if that escape has occurred. My only concern when I was reading this, I was happy that, all right, Beptilovimab is still functional, so there is some help available. And the second thing that concerned me was BA5 folks are actually the least protected. And uh, let me actually qualify it. CoronaVac, three-dose vaccine, then BA5 breakthrough infection, then this guy, BA467 or B, BA59, they had the least protection. That means majority of us are BA59 or BA5. That means we become open for reinfection once more. And the previous variants were actually more protective than BA5. So that's something that is uh, a concern for me. So they say then together our findings suggest that the significant humoral immune evasion, especially against convalescent convalescents from BA4 and 5 breakthrough infection, contribute to the emergence and rapid spread of multiple R346 mutation, mutated BA4 and 5 sublineages. So then the summary once more. And instead of here, just please see this. And I want to show you this diagram. And let's walk through this one. And this is the last part of the discussion today. 17 minutes. Let's do this part in two minutes and we'll be home free. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the CoronaVac vaccine, three doses. And if you see here, this y-axis is the plasma NT50. The x-axis is really nothing but various variants mapped on it. Top here is the, the number of folds reduction in potency against that variant for NT50. So for example, if you see here, D614G, the, the Wuhan variant, that has, let's call it the reference protection. And then if you go here, BA46, R346T, this one here, it has 1.5 times reduced NT50 potency. And so you can then look at all the rest in the same way. The most affected, at least in this diagram, is if you see here, CoronaVac, three doses and BA5 infection, that is 2.9x, 2.4x, 2.6x, 2.6x. No other infection, BA2 infection, is up to 1.9, 1.7. BA1 infection, 1.6 and 1.5. CoronaVac only, 1.7 and 1.5. But BA5 with CoronaVac, 2.6. So I keep saying it every single talk almost every single talk, not every single talk, that this is prozone or the hook effect that is going on. I think we should talk about the prozone or hook effect. It would be just a 15 minutes talk, but that would actually clarify. The prozone or the hook effect says, if we create more antibodies, that doesn't mean they are necessarily protective because they could now interfere with the good antibodies to bind with the virus. This is like, imagine if there's a crowd of people and they're all trying to go near some object and there is someone who actually has to go there and now that person who has to go to that object is stuck behind because the crowd is out, out there. 
So the this is pros on hook effect in a in a layman term, not a technical term. We'll do a separate talk if you agree on that. But I think the more vaccine boosters, the more infections probably is causing prozone effect, which then is causing this. This is my conjecture. We should talk about the prozone effect and then see if that applies or not. Maybe it doesn't. I actually did a study a few weeks ago where the authors said this could be prozone effect. And they actually said some prozone effect could be protective by reducing the amount of inflammation produced by the antibodies. Okay, so on this side here, this side, this is also very interesting. These are various monoclonal antibodies and their potency or efficacy against this. And what you can see is simply wherever they have these stars, that means it has escaped that particular antibody. So for example, here, Bamlanivimab. I used to be so um, much fan of Bamlanivimab, but anyways, Bamlanivimab, all the variants have escaped it. And what do escape mean? If you see at the bottom, the star means greater than 10,000, meaning the concentration has to be brought even beyond 10,000 whatever units. And even then, it doesn't really work. So that is kind of useless. A human, or we could not put, give that much of concentration to a human to protect them from the infection. So that means escaped, done. The only one here that you would appreciate is in green, is Beptil, Beptilovimab, Beptilovimab. I went to their site, Lily's site, and they had put this uh, pronunciation there, so I'm trying to pronounce it that way. Anyways, so that is potent. Actually, even better. Look at this, BA461. So that is equivalent as it was doing to the other parent or reference variants. And BA47, it is actually even better. BA59, it is even better than the parent. So it is actually potent working. But if you see everything else, here, if you notice this one, Silgavimab and Tixagavimab, these are the ones that make, I believe, Evusheld. And if you see here, all stars, meaning done, nothing. And if you see the overall map, for BA4659 and 47, nothing except Beptilovimab or Beptilovimab. So this is it. We're done. 22 minutes. Um, there are some questions here. Rob says, does it escape on the natural immunity only cohort? They do not have that data. If you see here in this diagram, there is no natural immunity only cohort. So if you see here, CoronaVac A, uh, A, B is CoronaVac, C is CoronaVac, D is CoronaVac. Let's see, maybe number two have it. Let's see here, BA5, these are the sequences. This is what they're showing that this is increasing in the US, it is increasing in the South Africa, and then in Germany, etc. I felt so bad for a second that I didn't look at the next picture and maybe they had it. No, so they don't have a, no, a natural infection. And that may also be because they may have less people not vaccinated in the in China, considering how aggressively they are vaccinating. Maybe, I'm just speculating. So no natural infection. So Rob, sorry, at least I don't see that data. M. Price says, I am confused. Is this a monoclonal antibody? So this chart here on the right side, the red ones are all monoclonal. These are 11 monoclonals that are that were at some point um, authorized by FDA as well. The only one that is still working monoclonal antibody is Beptilovimab, and it is still FDA authorized. Now, on the right side, is not the monoclonal antibody, but the antibody is taken from the patients who were given the vaccine. So let's say I am given CoronaVac, three doses. Then you take my plasma and take antibodies that I produced and then try to use those antibodies to neutralize BA46 or BA47 or BA59. And you find out my plasma doesn't do anything to them or it does lesser. Similarly, imagine I got three vaccine doses and then got BA1 infection. 
then you take my plasma and take antibodies from them. These are my natural antibodies, but these are produced with the uh, vaccine and the infection. And they are saying that 1.5 to 1.6 times less anti-50. Then let's say once I use myself for an example because I don't want to use somebody else as an example. It's nothing uh, weird that I say me. Uh, Coronavac three times and then BA2 infection. And if you see here, if you take my plasma then and take the antibodies that I generated, these are 1.7x, 1.9x anti less anti-50. And similarly, give me three doses of Coronavac and then give me BA5 infection, then take my plasma, take the antibodies, and then try it on the BA4, 6, 7, or BA5, 9, and you find out nothing, full escape. So I hope, uh, M. Price, that answers your question. So Paul Wolf, you're correct. So the only one that would work is Beptelo, Beptilovimab. Paul Wolf says that is China using antibodies from recovered convalescents to uh, treat others? I do not know if they're using convalescent plasma or not. But from this study, at least it's a preprint. But if it is replicatable, then that plasma is useless. Meanwhile, in America says, is there a way these antibodies could be reconstituted to help fight those with long COVID? It depends what is the pathology of long COVID. If the pathology is maybe a persistence of virus, then these antibodies or the convalescent plasma or the drugs that we know that I cannot speak the name of can work. If the pathology is because the immune system has become dysregulated and it is the macrophages or mast cells or monocytes that are going crazy, then these antibodies won't do much. If it is the pathology that monocytes are hanging on to the S protein, S1, like Dr. Bruce Peterson's work, then antibodies won't do much, either the drugs that we've talked about or autophagy. And if the pathology is something else, then we'll have to figure out what is that pathology before we can say how to help it. Zizi Bourbon says, Dr. Bean, will those who didn't have <laughs> any monoclonal antibody, excuse me, treatment to be able to fight the disease easier, better based on what this study indicates? This study says that monoclonals are all failed against the virus. And that doesn't matter you had the vaccine or previous infection or not, because monoclonal is monoclonal. It is a separate thing. They have all failed except Baptilovimab. Now I pronounced it correctly. Denise says what Dr. Bean was talking last night was a monoclonal. Thank you, Denise. Um, uh, Cynthia says, missed the beginning. Book or wait on book? Patreon, quick earlier question. So, um, so let me give a quick context. I have to make sure this doesn't become a long video, but let me give a quick context. Um, there's a publisher who is uh, asking me to write a book on immunology. I was asking Patreon patrons that, what do you think? Because I'll have to change some of my schedule and insert immunology lectures in these talks that might uh, make some people less interested in these talks because they're talking about COVID with me. And once we talk about immunology, not everybody would be interested. So that question was, should I insert some immunology lectures because that would help me write the book as well? And majority of the patrons said, yes, do it. I'm going to try this uh, Monday to start inserting immunology. Cynthia, thank you for asking. Okay, so if we want to still continue talking, then I can hang up here and we can do a chit chat. Otherwise, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Kingpin says, Dr. Mobin, does getting reinfected mean your long haul becomes longer or it restarts? So 
very interesting question. For some people, it actually goes away. And in, for some people, it just maintains. So, okay, very quick show of hands. <laughs> chit-chat or not chit-chat? If chit-chat, I will come back online. But I, I don't have anything prepared for the chit-chat. I'll just, we'll just talk and maybe answer these questions that we have. Siddhartha says, a CDC graph is a bit misleading as it puts BA5 together. BA5.2 is increasing just like BA4.6 while other BA5. So we'll thank you, Siddhartha, for clarifying that. And we'll have our own Paul as well talk about it next Thursday. Okay, so chit chat, please. Excellent. Just know that I'm going to come in to the chit chat without much preparation. So here is the request I have for you. Please like, subscribe, and share. The tiniest, smallest fee that you can give me is like. That would tell the algorithm. If you comment as well, that would tell the algorithm that, oh, people are really liking and engaging with this. I can give it to others. Then I can earn from the ads. That is one possibility. Or if you would like to support with the links, then there are in the description, there are there is a link for buying drbean.com at a very, 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 very affordable price. Or you can become a patron for $5 a month, or you can become a Substack member or you can use PayPal, or you can buy me a coffee, and there are some other things in there. And sometimes folks send me a message saying, I'm so sorry, I cannot contribute. These works have never been with the intent to say you should contribute. So these are for everyone, regardless of what they can do. If you can support it, great. If you cannot, there is no compulsion or even no hard feeling. Thank you, and I'll see you in chit chat in a few minutes.